Gordon was feeling unwell and complained to the other engines. Oh, I get so out of breath, but no one cares. They just tell me to have a rest. It's disgraceful. Maybe you just need extended tanks and a bunker too. Us tank engines don't run out of breath, do we now, eh? Gordon smiled, knowing Thomas was only joking. That evening, they checked Gordon all over. They couldn't make him feel better, so they sent him to the works and brought Henry to do his work. But one day, Henry was too busy and had different work to do. Bother, the fat controller said. On the last day, too, he grumbled. Now, let's see who's available, he continued. Thomas, Percy, Duck. And so it was arranged. The engines then settled to one another. Percy in the front, Duck in the middle, and Thomas in the back. Everyone got into the coaches and the guard blew his whistle. Come on, come on, fussed Percy importantly. We're doing it, we're doing it, said Duck. Pull harder, pull harder, Thomas grumbled to the others. And with that, the slow cavalcade came out of the station. And before long, they traveled along the mainland. They weren't as fast as Gordon and Henry, but the passengers couldn't care less. The express isn't like a normal passenger train, as they don't stop between stations, which didn't leave Thomas, Duck, or Percy with a lot of time to breathe. And as they passed Wellsworth, Gordon's hill then came. They surged up the hill, but the strain started to show. Puffing pistons and moving side rods went along as they reached the top and started to coast down. Oh, that was a near thing, sighed Thomas. Gordon would never let us hear the end of it, nor Henry. But they had spoken too soon as Percy started to feel worse. The ordeal had been too much for the poor guy. The whistle blew as an alert to award the others as the whole train stopped. We can't let you get off here, Percy. Just try your best to not keep your brakes on. There's not much further until the next station. This made the journey much harder for the two other engines. As the works grew closer still, they used every amount of strength they had to summon a last brave effort to the station. Nearly there, nearly there. We can make it, we can make it, wheezed Thomas. Poor Percy had no steam to say anything. At last, the workstation pulled into view. They were on the final approach when Duck realized he simply couldn't move no further. He bellowed steam as Thomas's pistons pumped. He shouted, screamed, squirmed, but couldn't pull any further. So the cavalcade stopped. with the workstation right in front of them. And then there was Gordon, staring in disbelief. One of the workmen then came up to them and told them that they would get a new coat of paint. Derek took the rest of the train as the free engines sighed with a relief. Then Thomas looked over. Gordon looked at Thomas, 
and winked. He didn't need to say anything, as Thomas knew exactly what he meant.